a little while ago, somebody put a comment on one of my videos asking to have a look around Smuggler's Blues, particularly inside, which doesn't normally get seen. So I thought, since it's a grey day and it's not really a boating day, I'd give you a look around the boat instead, explain what it's about and why I bought it. So this is the boat and it's an 8 metre Jeannot 805 leader. It's a size I particularly wanted because it's a very manageable size. I can handle this boat on my own very easily, but it's big enough that you can go properly offshore and feel like you're in a capable offshore boat. One thing I like about this boat is the fact that it's so beamy. A lot of boats of this size, they compromise the beam in order to be able to trailer the boat on the roads, which a lot of people like to do, especially in America. So they're limited to eight foot six wide because that's your maximum size for trailering. This boat, you know, I haven't worried about that at all. So they've made it almost 10 foot and it makes a colossal difference to the boat. It makes it a lot more stable because it's wider, but it also gives a lot more space on board. So if we have a look on, I'll explain to you exactly what I mean and just explain a few of the benefits of this boat. Now, one of the things this has got, and most of these have to be fair, is the extended bathing platform. So the standard platform comes to here. This one has the extended platform to here. It's a really nice area. When you're at anchor, you're swimming off the boat, water sports, whatever, this is a really good area, but it's also nice to actually sit on here with your back against here and watch the world go by. It's really great. Um, there's a shower here, so when you've been in swimming, you can shower yourself off with that. And then we come obviously into the cockpit. Now, the first thing to talk about is those side decks. Most boats of this size don't get them because they're eight foot six. There isn't the room for them because this is almost 10 foot wide. They've got really great side decks here walking up to the front of the boat. And that is really useful. Whether you pick up a mooring buoy, whether you're putting the fenders out, that is something that we use again and again. And it's something I really wouldn't want to be without. But where Geno have been clever is that as you come back to the cockpit, they stop. So your cockpit then becomes the full beam of the boat. It's not compromised by having those side decks at all. And that means you've got masses of seating in here, which takes full advantage of that beam. You can sit six people around a cockpit table here very comfortably. And if you use this seat that I'm on here, you can seat seven. Of course, when I'm driving the boat, I'm up here at the helm. Now, one of the things that I like, and again, it's down to that beam, is it's a double helm seat. A lot of boats are this size, they only have a single helm seat. And that means that if you're driving the boat, you're up here on your own, unless somebody wants to sit over here facing backwards or sideways. Um, here you can have two people sat together facing forward and uh, it makes it a much more sociable boating experience. The helm itself, there's been a few modifications with this boat, the most obvious of which is this Axiom Raymarine 9 uh, multifunction screen. So I've got charts on here, like so, um, and uh, also there's uh, the depth as well of course. Uh, and you can split screen if you want to. But what I particularly like as well is I've got this linked up to the engine. So you've got things like um, navigation, direction. Uh, you've got, um, if you've got a waypoint in, you can use this as a rolling road for navigation. But you can also see your fuel consumption, total fuel flow, the engine economy. So as you adjust the trim or the speed, you can see how that's affecting your economy. That's a nice piece of kit. While we're in this area, let's talk about the canopy because that's another area that has been upgraded on this boat. So this canopy, um, this is not the standard canopy. This has been upgraded to a sombrella material style canopy. And uh, I've made a couple of modifications to myself. The most important of which I think is to put a zip in just here. When I got the boat, this was all one piece all the way back. By putting that zip in there, it means that on a warm day when it's really sunny, we can take the back section off. People can sit out here if they want the sunshine, but when you're at the helm and you're on the boat all day, you've got a bit of shade. That I think is a really nice feature. I'm very pleased that I've done that. Um, and equally, I put another zip in just underneath here. I say I've put it in, I've had it put in, I should say. Um, and the reason for that is originally, if you wanted to use this as a bimini, you take the sides out and the front, you would roll up and you would tie in with these. So you'd have a bunch of canopy rolled up here. And then in order to support this and stop it all flapping backwards, you have these big sections in here. So firstly, it's all a bit ungainly with all this canopy rolled up here. And secondly, you've got quite a big blind spot there. So by able to zip this out, this becomes completely open. Of course, the next thing then is well, what stops it from flapping backwards? Well, I've had these tie downs fitted here. They loop around here, go down and hook onto here. And that keeps it all taut so that all of this can be run with all the sides out, the top up as a sun top, and that works really well. And of course, if it's a really good day and you're not too worried about the shade, then this, once all this is out, will simply fold back like that. There's a sock that goes around it and you've got the whole boat completely open. 
VHF radio, I upgraded that. The big news with this is it's got its own inbuilt GPS, completely separate to that one. Um, which means that in a distress situation, there's a button here that you can use to use the DSC system to call for help. And that not only lets people know that you're in trouble, but it also lets them know exactly where you are instantly, which clearly is extremely important. Another thing this boat's got, it had it when I got it, and it's a very nice feature indeed. It's a bow thruster, which means that you've got a propeller built into the bow that will actually push the bow left or right. So when you're maneuvering into a berth, you can actually push the boat sideways. That's a really good feature. But when I bought the boat, it had two buttons here to control it, which means that when you're driving and you're using all the controls, trying to find the right button to push sometimes when you're looking in the opposite direction is not always easy. So I swapped that for a joystick, which means intuitively, if you want the boat to go left, you can literally just reach and press it without even looking at it, either direction, of course, and uh, empower the nose with that. So that, I thought, was quite a useful thing. What else? This steering wheel. Um, 20 years ago, I used to run boats with a very good friend of mine, uh, and we always used to fit them with the Volvo Penta Sport Mahogany steering wheel. So just as a nod to old times, I have one fitted to this boat. It's a really tactile, nice steering wheel. That's exactly the same as the wheel we used to have 20 years ago. And finally, the other thing I've upgraded up here is the speaker system. So it's got two speakers, which it came with speakers on it, but they were pretty rubbish, standard issue speakers. I've put some really top quality JL Audio M series speakers, they make a massive difference. The difference basically is that you can use the stereo while you're cruising at 20 knots and hear it comfortably without any distortion at all, where before you couldn't, it sounded terrible when you cranked it up. So that is a nice feature. Obviously there's one each side, there's one over on that side as well. And the boats had cockpit lights fitted just there and just over there. So when you come down here at night, getting on the boat, flip those on and you can see what you're doing. So that is the uh, the cockpit area. If we head downstairs, I'll give you a little look down there. So down the stairs here, um, I think one of the first things to talk about is the headroom in here because back here, I mean, I'm six foot, six foot one, six foot two, I guess. Um, and uh, if I stand up dead straight, my head is just touching the ceiling. But for a boat of this size, that is a win because a lot of boats that I go on, I'm, I'm quite sort of cramped over in here, but this is nice to have standing headroom here. Clearly it drops as you go forward, um, but then you don't need the headroom up there because you've got your dinette area. Now that will convert to a double berth by dropping the table and putting some cushions in. We never use it because it's got a separate sleeping area, which I'll show you in a bit. Over on this side, we've got the galley area. Now, another nice thing about this boat is a proper two burner gas hob. A lot of boats just have a single meths burner which is uh, a little more awkward to use. With this, you have a gas bottle out in the cockpit in its own self-draining locker. So if it leaks, it leaks out over the side of the boat, not into the boat. And of course, you can isolate it from there. But down here, once you turn the gas on, you just use this as you would use um, a hob at home. You just flick it on, light it, and away it goes. Lots of storage as well. So you've got storage in underneath here. The bin is in there as well. And you've got more storage at the back, just up here on both sides. Uh, and you've got a fridge tucked away down under there with a nice box, which is a particularly nice feature. Not much in there at the moment because we're not cruising on the boat at the moment. Um, what else? Um, this seating area here, particularly comfortable because they're very deep seats. And again, I keep coming back to it, but it's the beam on this boat just makes this a really comfortable place. So we can sit up here um, and it's you don't feel like you're sort of sat bolted up right you can really relax and one of the things that i've added to the boat is a tv system which kel surprise is showing my device at the moment now that is a 22 inch tv it's got a dvd in the side of it and it's 12 volts so if you're on a mooring and it's a miserable day on holiday or something and the weather's not so good you can still use the television and there's a stereo just above it um, that's an upgraded stereo that's got a usb in it so i can take the usb stick home put whatever music i want bring it down plug it in and away i go but what's nice is that this tv links into this stereo and uses that as its sound source so you've got a speaker over on this side another one out over on the other side so you've got stereo sound from your tv you can sit down here have a drink put your feet up and it's just a really cozy area to come down and relax when the weather's not quite so good for boating. Um, and on the subject of that, also, it's an optional extra again. I didn't fit it, the boat came with it, but I'm very, very pleased to have it. This is Webasto diesel-fired central heating. So that runs from the diesel tank of the boat and its own onboard 12 volt system. And that means you don't need to be plugged into shore power. It does have shore power, which is a 240 volt uh, supply to the boat, which gives you a ring main on the boat like you'd have at home. But that will work regardless. And it's really powerful. There's an outlet 
down there, um, which kicks out masses of heat. In fact, we quite often turn it on, whack it up to here, and then after about 20 minutes, we're turning it back down because it's churning out so much heat. Um, nice little storage area from the top for books and um, radio controlled boats, if you're into that sort of thing. And then finally, and it's something you don't often find in boats of this size, surprisingly enough, but there's a proper wardrobe just here. So you can hang all your shirts and your trousers and whatever you want without feeling like they're all going to get squashed in a locker and creased up. Um, what else have I done? Tiny things, but very important. Smoke alarm up there. Uh, and also, uh, this boat has got a carbon monoxide monitor. In fact, I've got two of these on the boat. Uh, very, very important. They're not expensive. They run off their own power supply. You really should have these on a boat because carbon monoxide is the silent killer. Um, what else have we got? We've got the loo over here. Now, um, this again is uh, a decent size. I keep coming back to the beam on this boat, but it really does, everywhere you go on the boat, it really does show. Um, in here, it's a sea toilet, so it flushes using seawater, it comes out from the sea, around the bowl, and out again. That's a very good system, most boats have got it. The only problem with it is that you quite often get bacteria build up in the inlet pipe, and it is impossible to clean, because whatever you put down the loo, it goes down the outlet pipe. What I've fitted is this Sea Smart unit, just over here. Now what that does, it's like a catheter that runs right down the inlet pipe to the end, to the seacock, and it um, squirts in detergent at regular intervals, um, which disinfects it, and uh, it gets rid of any bad smells from that. Works really well, and it also gives detergent into the bowl as well, which is nice. Um, we have got um, the freshwater system in here, of course, um, that runs from there. Um, hot and cold water, and if you want a shower, you can pull that out and have a shower. There's a drain in the bottom just there. Now, the other thing to talk about in here is the mid cabin. And the first thing you find with this boat is that, unlike a lot of boats this size, again, I think because of that nice wide beam, you've got a proper door to it. A lot of these boats just have a curtained off area with a bed tucked underneath the back. This has got a proper cabin. So you open this and you find a little lobby area just here with standing headroom. This is great because it makes a really good changing area, either if you're getting ready for bed or just if you're out day boating and somebody wants to come in here and get changed with a bit more privacy, they can use this area and that works well. Um, a little seat in here, got my dressing gown in here as well, which I think is quite a nice little touch. Little seat here. Um, there is another carbon monoxide alarm just there. That's the other one. This window opens and there is a skylight up above as well which opens so you can get lots of ventilation through here on a warm day and there is another wardrobe just here again it's something you often don't find in boats of this size but they've taken full advantage of that beam to give us a nice wardrobe in there not very much in there at the moment but it's there if you want to use it and then finally of course you've got your bed down underneath here this is a really good size it's over six feet long and it's uh it's a proper double uh of two people that is pretty comfortable um and of course you're headed at this end, so you've, you're actually underneath this huge area here. So although clearly the the, uh, the height drops as you go back underneath there, you don't feel claustrophobic because your head isn't under here, it's under here. And having slept in the boat for up to a week at a time, I can tell you that that is a very comfortable, very cosy little berth. So the very last thing to talk about is the mechanics. So we'll head back out into the cockpit for that and they are tucked away under the floor back here. In fact, just while we're back here, there's another thing worth mentioning, and that is the fact that this is actually, as you can see on this little plate just here, hopefully, it's a, um, a Category B RCD boat. Well, what that means is this boat is fully compliant with things like proper channel crossing. It's a proper offshore boat. In fact, if you look closely, you'll see it says 7B and 9C. What that means is it's uh, Category B for up to seven people, you can go nine people for uh, inshore and coastal. But as I say, most boats this size, they are just inshore and coastal regardless. So that, I think, is a nice touch. Shore power plugs in down here. That's your 240 volt system. You plug in there and that gives you um, various features like uh, 240 volt plug and uh, battery charging. So to get to the engine, there's a little catch just here. We'll flick that, pull that, and on these hydraulic struts, we have got the engine space. Now, one nice thing is this sort of lazarette area that we've got just down here, which gives us a load more storage. You can put canopies in there, whatever you want. In fact, I had a tonneau cover made for the boat, which we tend to use mostly in the winter, actually. Uh, what else have we got in here? Well, we have got circuit breakers for the um, 
240 volt system so that's your water heater your outlets and your charger so while we're in this area down in this side tucked away down here now the Geno 805 comes rather meanly I think with just a single battery this one's been quite significantly upgraded what we've got here is a triple battery installation now the final thing to talk about is the engine and a lot of boats of these sorts of size have the smaller KAD32 or D3 engine uh, on the Geno 805 they put the uh, KAD42 which is the bigger um, 3.6 litre engine rather than the 2.4 or the 32 and then later they changed that to the new uh, D4 um, 3.7 litre engine uh, which is much bigger than the uh, the D3 which is again I think about a two and a half litre engine it makes a colossal difference a um, lot more grunt and it means that with six people on this boat or even seven people as we have had once all adults everyone sat at the back you open the throttle kick it onto the plane and it just goes effortlessly no problem at all with smaller engines I suspect you probably struggle a bit when you load them up now I opted for the newer D4 engine I specifically looked for a boat with D4 rather than the older KAD uh, 42 now there's nothing at all wrong with the KAD 42 it's a very good very well proven engine however it does date back technology wise to the 80s it was based on the original AQAD 41 which itself was based on the 40 right back in the mid 80s so it is a very well proven engine but it's not a very modern engine this one is the D4 260 it came out in 2005 and it's one of the new common rail high pressure super efficient super low emission motors now there are a couple of benefits to that firstly of course it is much more efficient therefore it uses a lot less fuel and we use this boat a lot so uh, that is important it's also being low emission you don't get any smoke out of the boat ever a lot of these boats uh, with the older engines when you start them up they're a bit smoky and when you accelerate onto the plane they're a bit smoky you never get anything with this um, and you also never get any soot on the back of the boat, which is quite important if you're using it a lot. Some of these older engines, they do get a bit sooty on the back over a period of time. A um, couple of other benefits. Uh, this engine is a four-cylinder engine. The uh, KAD42 is a six-cylinder. Now, if you look at this boat with a six-cylinder engine, this engine is right up against here, um, which must make changing these belts or dealing with this quite difficult. With a four-cylinder engine, the block is shorter. You can get in in front of the engine. You can get to the front of the engine and uh, that i think is a very beneficial thing um, but beyond that um, this particular boat when i looked at it one of the things that really attracted me to it was the condition of this engine which is fantastic um, i looked at some boats they've got oily bilges they've got uh, water in the bilge whatever else the engines are a little bit rusty in places and i'm sure they run absolutely fine but when i looked at this this was all immaculate it obviously been a very well cared for boat and that is important to me because this is a very expensive bit of kit um, and so I've tried to look after it in the same way. It's, it's obviously properly serviced regularly. Um, I keep this area dry and clean. Um, in fact, just down here, there is a, um, a 240 volt socket, which means that we can plug in a, uh, a heater in the winter, which, we, which I do. I put a heater across here and it just keeps this area warm and dry. It is, it is an excellent engine. It's, um, I say, not just the actual sheer size of it, which is important, but the condition of this one is, is superb. So that's it, that's the tour of my Genoa 85 leader. I've had the boat now for a little over a year. I bought it April last year, and it's now August uh, the following year, mid-August. Uh, used the boat a lot. It's covered everywhere from um, Foy in Cornwall in one direction, right up to Lyme Ridges in the other, and all points in between, really, and all sorts of conditions. And the boat has been absolutely brilliant. It's totally exceeded my expectations, and they were pretty high, I have to say. It's a great hull. It handles very, very well. It's very stable. That engine is gutsy, smooth, and quiet. Um, love the space on the boat. Love the layout. Love that separate aft cabin. And I like the facilities, and I think the little upgrades I've made to it have just made it even better. I certainly think that it is, of the 8-metre boats of this style, the one to own. I'm not saying that because I own it. I own it because I think that. Anyway, that's about the size of it, really. If you've enjoyed the video, then do give the, uh, the thumbs up button a quick click. That apparently helps things. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.